Okay, so you've decided to sell your home and move somewhere else. That's fantastic, but how do you do this? And in today's seller's market, what's that process look like? Today we're gonna to share a couple of tips and tricks for selling your home in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. What's up everybody? My name's AJ Pedersen, and I am here to tell you everything you need to know about the Minneapolis area. What it's like to eat, sleep, play, live, and learn in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the surrounding suburbs. So if you want to know that information, make sure you subscribe, tap the bell so you get notified every time that we post a new video. All the time we get people reaching out to us, asking us questions about the market, asking us how to go about buying or selling a, a new home in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. We love getting questions and we love interacting with our followers, our friends, um, and really anyone that wants to talk real estate in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the process of selling your home in the Minneapolis area. We'll give you some cold hard facts about how to prepare your home for sale, what that process looks like, and then what to prepare for in the transition. So today's market, 2021, what is a seller's market? People ask that question. So it just means there's more demand for homes than there is supply. So if you ever taken an economics course, you know that supply and demand are kind of what drive prices. Um, and again, in 2021 today, as we stand June 15th, it is a seller's market here in the Twin Cities. Month supply is at an all time low, I think, at 0.9 months across the Twin Cities, which means if no new homes were listed in the next 0.9 months or 27-ish days, uh, we would have no homes on the market. It's a saturation rate. So it's pretty remarkable. Uh, a lot of markets are seeing 10 to 15 uh, median days on market before going to pending, which is pretty wild. So welcome. If you're a seller, it's a great place to be a seller, a great time to be a seller. Um, and you should feel pretty good about your chances about fi of finding a buyer at a good price. When to list your home is a question we get all the time. And here in Minnesota, obviously, um, where we have pretty much two seasons, one that's very hot and one that's very cold, um, you can see kind of how things roll, how many new listings come on at different times. Um, we're entering peak new listing um, season right now, and that will just start to taper off kind of from July into January every year. Um, I could show you a graph, it's pretty wild. Um, kind of how things uh, seasonally move. But more specifically, what day of the week to list your home? We love listing homes as coming soon on the MLS on Monday or Tuesday of the week that they're gonna go active on Thursday or Friday. So not only time of year, but more specifically, what day of the week should you list your home? We like to put homes coming soon status on MLS on Monday or Tuesday in the week that we're gonna list them active on the market Thursday or Friday. The reason we do that, Thursday or Friday historically uh, yields a higher uh, amount of money for sellers than earlier in the week or a Saturday or a Sunday. So we're just using past experience and data to go with that. So something to really think about is what day of the week you're gonna list your home on the market. Also sell for quite a bit more, according to some studies, about 64% more on the first day than they do the first day that the price drops. So it's important to note that just overpricing your home because we're in a seller's market might not be the best option because if you later on have to drop the price, the demand for the home might not be there. Typically the first few days is when we see the highest amount of surge in demand for any of our listings. Another reason why we do the coming soon status before we go active is it allows buyers a little bit of time to talk to their agents about getting showing set up for the end of the week. So if we go coming soon Monday or Tuesday, we can kind of expect to see those showings start to trickle in for that active date. They cannot show the home until it's actually active on the MLS but our showing time and everything can be set up so the portal's ready to receive showings and have our sellers accept them or decline them. You know, due to the pandemic, we saw an incredible surge in buying demand and listing activity just kind of trailed behind. So that's part of what I talked about earlier with that month supply. The reason why it's trickled down so far um, is really, honestly, from my perspective, it's due to a lot of demand entering the marketplace. Price isn't the only thing that sellers consider when they're picking an offer. Um, there are other terms included in the contract. There could be a short inspection, there could be no inspection. Um, there could be a fast closing, which sometimes is adv advantageous to sellers. There could be a rent back option for the sellers if they're looking for a new home. Um, one other thing that's really important is the type of financing or lack thereof uh, in the contract. So cash offers are probably the, the most favorable to a seller. Um, next behind that would be large down payment offers. 
and then all the way down to you know that 3% down conventional or 3.5% FHA or 0% VA. Sometimes those are seen as not as strong. Um, and so the terms are very important because when painting a picture for sellers, we like to give them the whole thing and not just the net price that they're receiving, but also the chances that it's gonna get to a successful closing. So you put your home on the market and you received a few offers. The best way to compare them just put them side by side. Like I mentioned, there's price, there's seller paid closing costs, there's closing date, there's inspection timeframes, there's types of financing, or maybe it's cash. The, the thing that I like to do is I like to put a Google sheet out there. I share with my client. It spells out all those different terms in the contract. And then we can have a conversation about which ones stand out versus other ones. And that way we're just comparing apples to apples. What is going to yield the best result for the seller? And you kind of go from there and you go with your best terms, best price a lot of the time um, when you have a situation where you have several people interested. Selling your home is always gonna be a stressful process. There's really no way around that, but we hope for our sellers that in the end it's totally worth it, that it was a stress-free or somewhat stress-free, seamless transaction and transition into whatever is next for our sellers. So we really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have comments, shoot them below, questions, we love hearing from you. And again, subscribe to the channel if you like the content we're putting out. We love more followers. And again, we love chatting with you. Thanks for tuning in.